Good morning, this is Pastor John Fisherman Cranwell with uh, my good brother here and friend uh, who is Chris. How are you, Chris? Man. Hollywood man. And how are you all this morning all over the world? It's, uh, we're, you're coming in on uh, GRV TV broadcasting station here in the coffee shop um, just opposite Munoz uh, Railway Station. And uh, it's a cloudy day today here, it's a little bit hot still. So this morning, we're going to uh, teach about, Chris and I are going to teach and talk about the book of Proverbs. Okay? So let's start here. Proverbs. Right. It's an amazing book, actually. It's written by the, ki the King Solomon? Yes, it's, yes, Chris, that's right. It's written by King Solomon also uh, with portions by Agar and King Lemud. And it's a book of the principles of living. Uh, it's a book of wisdom, knowledge, instruction, and understanding. So some of the topics we're going to speak about this morning will be wisdom versus stupidity, righteousness versus wickedness, good versus evil, life versus death, honor versus dishonor, truth versus falsehood, Common sense versus recklessness. Peace versus violence. Kindness versus anger. And God versus man. Now that's just some of the very many topics that the book of Proverbs contains. Now, but there's one there, one proverb, that is probably a foundation verse. So let's start there at the foundation. And let's... Um, build a foundation to this study today, okay? So this is a foundation, or can be, for your life. And it's in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It's a very common one, very popular one, but it's a, one of the main ones, foundation scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, and in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Now that's a very wise proverb, isn't it? To put all your trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not some of it a part of it, but with all your heart. But don't try and work it all out. There's a lot of people trying to work out their future. They try to work out this, that and the other. And they just get confused and um, get frustrated and uh, worried. So try not to use your understanding. But trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's where we make choices in the heart, and that's where it works. So when we make choices from here, been there, done that, made many mistakes from here. Okay, so that's a fundamental and very basic foundation uh, problem. So but let's start with one of my, how can I put it, pet issues, and it's child discipline. Okay, so we have a look. In, in the book of Proverbs, in uh, chapter 13 and verse 24. And it says, He who spares his rod hates his son, and he who loves his son loves him, disciplines him promptly. He who spares his rod hates his son. Today, in, in our corrupt world, children are being taught toward so called discipline through psychology. Naughty boy, you shouldn't do that again. You must do it again, or I'll give you, a, I'll give you a whack. And they just talk about it and talk. Oh no, no, no! I'll give you another chance. And, and you see, talking doesn't discipline. Talking to a child does not discipline them. And you've got to start young. But if you try to start disciplining your child, especially your son, when he becomes a teenager, uh, it'll not happen. You won't do it. It doesn't work that. It's too old to be whacked. You see, here the Bible says here, he who spares his rod hates his son. But he who gives him the rod loves his son. Okay? So if you love your children enough, you'll hit them with a stick when they're naughty. Okay? But the world today says, psychology. No, that's not the answer. That's 
pay. That's a cop out. Look, we don't like, we don't enjoy hitting our children. Nobody does. But we must do as the Bible says. What it says here in God's word. Discipline our children with the stick. It never did me any harm. I got the stick at school a lot too. They did that at the school in my days. Not today. But you know what today, and you know what I'm saying. Today, children in most countries, if their parents stick them, they can go to the police station, make a case, take them to court, find them, imprison them, or sticking them. Now, what's happened here? The governments have allowed this trash to control families. They've allowed this trash of giving the children rights to get their family, their parents, they stick them, put in prison. There's something wrong with this picture. That should never have been allowed. That is not God's standard. That is not God's way. God's way is to use the stick. So if you love your son enough, enough to go to prison today, you stick him. You'll never forget it. Especially today, if he puts you in prison, you'll never forget that and neither will you. But you must forgive him. So today, we need the book of Proverbs more than ever before in our corrupt world. Okay? So that's one of my pet issues. And uh, it's so wrong that children, little kids, have the right to put their parents into prison because of discipline. Now, I tell you what. Discipline, discipline, I find is not done today like it was in my days. And the children are so undisciplined, so unruly, they just do their own thing, when they like, how they like, who they like, whatever. And they're running rampant because of lack of discipline. You know, one thing I really regret was not joining the army. Chris, were you in the army? We had ROTC. ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Course in Canada. Okay. two years. So you got good discipline? Yes. Did that do you any harm? No. Did the discipline harm you? Did, did it make you a better person or a worse person? Better person. Of course it does. And that's what discipline does. So why doesn't the army use psychology? Come on, let's get real. Because it doesn't work. It's been proven it doesn't work. Psychologists go to each other. Psychologists, psychologists even commit suicide. So what's the use of psychology? Let's talk about it. No, let's do about it. And let's, let's stick our children and discipline them properly so they can turn out to be a better person. Okay? So that's just one of my um, things here. Um, so let's go on a bit further and have a look at some discipline here in Proverbs. So when you love your children, stick them. That proves your love to them according God, to God's word. And God's word is the one to take notice of. Amen? So let's have a look now in Proverbs uh, 29. Okay. I'm having trouble getting out of 24. Right. Proverbs 29 and verse 17. Okay. Correct your son. What does it say? To it? I think it talks about them too. Correct your son and he will give you rest. Is he will give delight to your soul. When we correct them. Now, sometimes it can go backwards, depending on the attitude of the son and how much uh, he opposes you, if he really opposes you and rebels against you, then there's a problem, because it can backfire there, okay? But 
Normally, under normal family conditions, correction, discipline is a must. So correct your son and he will give you rest. You have peace and he will give delight to your soul. So how many of our children have delighted our soul? Because of our instructions. And In Australia, bro, you, you can file a case with your parents? Yep. Just I'm like just in, the same in the US? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a problem. Filing a complaint against the parents and yeah. sticking the kids. Well, that's sad because you grow up with your children. Yeah. You took care of them and when they grow up, you will file against you and you'll be in prison. Yeah, it's just it's it's against the Bible's teachings, right? Yeah, it's, it's more rebellion. And what, what sort of these children who are like that, who persecuted their parents by putting them in the prison because of them but disciplining them what sort of person will they grow up into a very bad person so we're warning you here discipline your children regardless of what the law says because the law is wrong here in this case the law is wrong it is not God's law it's, it opposes the word of God it opposes the Bible it opposes God and uh, so we must be strict on this, eh, Chris? Yeah. Very strict. Even Abraham, I don't know, he was disciplining his children. Who? Abraham. Abraham, yeah. Yeah. Whipping the children. Right, so let's have another, another one at Proverbs 20, 29, verse 7. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse 7. Were you being whipped with your parents before? Yeah, my mum, she stick me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never did me any harm. Yeah. Oh, I got the stick. stick. Uh, grade five. In grade five, of Mr. Judd. I got the stick. Uh, even our, day, even our, one. even our teachers, our teachers with us. Yeah. Teachers. Yeah. Yeah. It's teacher. good. We need discipline. <laughs> we need it. But now it's different. You know. I know it's very bad. The world's gone crazy. So. Um, 22 and uh, verse 6. Let's have a look. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay. So, if we train the children up in the God's way, like my, my kids, I, I told them this. Hey kids, I've got four of them in New Zealand. I said, it depends on who you hang with as to where you spend eternity. Did you whip your kid also before? I, I didn't use a whip, I used a stick. No, I used yeah. a, a ru ruler, I used a special... In fact, in fact, I bought a, a stick they called a whaling stick. It was shaped like the size, size of a whale. It was about that thick hardwood from the Bible shop. And on the back of the, the stick, there's about seven scriptures on disciplining your child with the stick from the Bible. So whack, whack, whack. Yes, they got the stick. They got it all right. Me, my mother used this sticks from the coconut. <laughs> okay. No, the palm. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's more uh, painful. Is it? With, you know, right. traces of tree. We used to get the cane at school like this. Whack, whack, whack. I've got six from the best from the headmaster once. He gave me a choice. But you have belated happy birthday, bro. Oh, Where yes, did you, you spend your birthday? <laughs> right. Did you celebrate your birthday? Yeah, thank you. So let's now go to another topic. Self-control. Mm, Self-control, yeah. Okay, so let's look at Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 29. We'll go to... Yeah, 29. He who is slow to wrath, slow to anger, has great understanding. But he who is impulsive exalts folly, foolishness. When we are slow to anger, you see, unfortunately, some people have a very short fuse, a very short wick, and they snap and, they, and they're like dynamite immediately, and without even thinking what they're going to say or do, they're, they're there, their anger goes 
of well, they're the very foolish and unwise types of people. Not having any understanding of how to communicate even in an argument. And in families, in marriages, there's always arguments. They make movies about it even. Okay. So there's all, but when a person has bad anger, there's something wrong with that person. Bad anger is really bad. You must stop. You must have a short, uh, not a short fuse, a long fuse. Think about what you're going to say before you explode. Because the Bible tells you here that you do not have a good understanding. You're impulsive and that makes you foolish. But those of you who are slow to anger are wise. Think about it before you say about it. Think. Okay? Self-control. Self-control. You cannot blame the other person. Oh, you made me be like this because of. No, it's not their fault. You are the problem. You've got the short fuse. You've got the bad temper. You've got no self-control. So you've got to get it right. Because the Bible says it's not right to be like that. Okay? Let's have a look now at Proverbs 25 and verse 28. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. A broken city without walls. Anybody can come in and rob and steal. Do what they like. So whoever has no rule over his or her own spirit is like a broken down city without walls. That doesn't sound like a very good type of person, does it? No, it doesn't. Okay, so the thing is, have rule over your own spirit. You have the right, God given right, to have a rule over your spirit, to control yourself, to have self control. You can do that. It's a choice. In life, Chris, how many choices do we have? <laughs> Too many. So many. One trillion. And how many times do we make the wrong choice? But we make right choices too. Okay? So make a right choice, get rid of your short views, get a long views and rule over your own spirit. Okay? Now, uh, Proverbs 29, 11. Okay? Let's have a look. A fool oops, vents all his feelings. <laughs> but a wise man holds them back. Hmm. Silently, quiet. Hmm. Okay. Hold back. It's worth holding back. You see, when you get angry at somebody and you say you hate them because you said this, you've done this, you're committing murder in your pusso, in your heart. How about your wife? He said, hey, nako jan. <laughs> yeah, many times. <laughs> yeah. So yes. many times you, you've been quiet. Sometimes. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm quiet and I, I just... You don't react? Yeah? I, I get angry inside me sometimes. <laughs> but I don't vent it. I, I can control it. But I've learned to control my anger. It's like but, Larry. But you see, you've got to be careful. Because... We're only human, and sometimes even a mouse, if he's cornered, will fight back ferociously and bite you, sink his teeth into you. Okay? In a, in a, in a, just a little intermission. This morning, before I came here, I had a pastor living in my condo now. I adopted him because he has no place to live in Tromanila. He's from Davao. And his son is in the past city in Batanga. So I accommodated him in my place now. For how many months now? But this morning, he said hurting words to me. 
And I was telling him, don't say that. I even accommodated you in my place. Instead of what's uh, careful with your words. He was telling me that it was, you know, like, uh, you know, that I cannot be trusted in school thing. How much more in big things? I told him, no, don't say that to me. I even accommodated you here. Free. I can't even tell you to get out of my place. So I was there, very or? kind to him, and he was a pastor. He's a pastor. Yeah. I don't know. Don't say that to me. I'm a very kind man. People know that. A lot of people know that. Careful with your words. Mm-hmm. Yes. We must be careful with our words. God holds us accountable for every word we say, and He will remind us one day and judge us upon our words. So I told my friend to advise this guy. Yeah. Because if I'm full, I will let him go. Get out of my place. I have. I have had enough. Yeah, because we can only take so much, and enough is enough. Yeah. And so and that's where more discipline comes in. So the older people. I was, you know, I was searching these words this morning. Yeah. That's why I came late, and I had I tried this also. Yeah, so that doesn't make sense. You're like a bear with a sore tooth. You know what? What happened to my place? He destroyed my rice cooker. He destroyed my electric pan. He destroyed my induction cooker. What, what I said, oh, that's life, that's life. Because you always forgot, bro. Yeah. He put the, you know, the, the induction cooker and the rest, and he forgot to remove it. That's why it's overheat. Yeah. And then, you know, it damaged. Right. But I tolerated those things. Yeah. And then that's the thing, that the word that was telling to me this morning, it's worth hurting. You know? Anyway, <laughs> some people are really <laughs> stupid. This <laughs> time stupid. Right, that's not good, Chris. So let's have a, now, a look now at truth. So let's have a look about truth. And we go to Proverbs uh, chapter 12 and verse 18. Verse 18. Get your banana, bro. This is your share, bro. Okay. Thank you. Verse 18. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. So we must not talk with the piercings of a sword, you know, like to, to hurt people. We've got to be careful. You see, you can do a Bible study on the tongue. And it tells you about a tongue. It's like a small member can make a lot of, do a lot of damage. Once you say something, you can never get it back. You cannot re- retrieve it back. It's said, it's done. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, all, it's already inside your system. Yeah. System of the other person. So the Bible says that the tongue is like the rudder of a ship. It's only small compared to the size of the ship, but it takes a ship wherever it wants to go. And you take a match, it says it's like a match, but you light it, and it can start up a complete forest fire. So the tongue is like, so you've got to be careful with what we say. Also too, there's many, many times, and we're not using wisdom in, in speaking death, or the doctor said, I've got this, I've got that, and the other. Don't accept it. Don't accept the doctor. Go to Dr. Jesus. Accept what he says. Don't speak negative over, your, over yourself or allow other people to speak negative over you. If your wife says, oh, you're going to die with cancer. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I reject that. I rebuke that. No, I'm not going to die with cancer at all. I don't believe that. I'm not going to die with diabetes. I'm not going to die with this. I'm not going to die through that. No, I'm going to get better. God's going to heal me. Uh, medicine's going to heal me. I'm going to get better. So speak life, not death. Now, that's the truth of the matter here. And that's, that's Do you remember that I said the hurting words to you? Do you remember any hurting words from Never. me to you? Never. That's why I'm very extra careful. Yeah, oh, you've got to be very careful. Careful. Yeah. It Especially is more, if you're in another country. It's more being pulled than a sword, you know. Yeah. And also, too, being in another country, like me being a foreigner, the thing is this, is that the other person you're speaking to can sometimes misinterpret what you're saying. Maybe you, you've got certain sayings that you use in your country, like we have, certain slang, and they don't understand that, and they misconstrue it and misinterpret it, and then there's an argument. 
That happens. Yeah. I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> okay. Since you're arrogant, huh? Yeah. So, um, there's one who speaks like the piecings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. So, don't hurt people. Speak health into people. Speak positive. Speak life into people. Speak life uh, about yourself from your mouth. Speak life, not death. Okay, so let's have a look at now um, verse 23. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaim foolishness. We, we had a guy at one of my places of work when I was working back in New Zealand many years ago, and we called him the computer because he seemed to know everything. He had an answer for everything. But you know, he was never right. He was sort of the laughing matter at that word, you know. Um, and so some people can be very foolish with all their outlandish statements and all their so-called wisdom and knowledge. And it just puffs them up with pride and it means nothing to the others. And it you makes know, their foolishness. What they call so, here, that one people person, NBSS. NBSS. M. M. B. B M B S S. What's that mean? My shadow believes sa sarili. He's the center. I'm the all knowledgeable person. Oh, right, right. My shadow believes sa sarili. Can you speak it? No, no I hope I can't. <laughs> but we're speaking to the world. We're not speaking out another language. Yeah. So we must be prudent and not having a foolish heart. Let's not be foolish. Let's be wise. Let's let's do the, the truth. Uh, uh, chapter 12, 25. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. Tell me about it. But a good word makes a plan. You know, sometimes we can go down deep in depression. Okay? We've all been there. But when somebody comes along and puts in a positive word, and it builds us up and encourages us. So always be an encourager. Never put in a negative word or, or a, some um, word that's uh, in opposition. Feel the room. Feel what's happening in the room. Don't be the elephant in the room. Feel, feel the, the room. And, and be kind and considerate and understanding to the person who's depressed. Don't put them down, don't judge them. But always bring them up, build them up, encourage, encourage, encourage. Uh, and the Bible says to encourage one another as we see the day drawing near, the second coming day they're speaking about. Okay, so now let's have a look about good and evil. Okay. So that's Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verse 13 to 28. Oh, that's a lot, isn't it? Okay. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Today is what they do, they reward evil for good. But now, what is evil is not evil, it's good. And what is good is not good today. Like even you, you find out online that the Bible is not the truth, and the truth is a lie. And so now people are being um, manipulated, brainwashed, not to believe the truth. And it's so easy to believe a lie. I mean, how many times have you told the truth and they say, oh, no, I can't, can't believe that. I like, and and if, if you say something um, and you um, make it a little bit bigger than it is, you exaggerate, they'll believe you. Or not. <laughs> so it's really strange in our world today about... What is your favorite verse in the Proverbs, bro? Well, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, the one I gave first. What's that? Yeah. What's that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways to re uh, follow uh, him, he will direct your paths. Acknowledge so him. do not depend on your 
human knowledge. No, no, doesn't work. <laughs> Prove that too. Yeah. If God will not allow it, it will not be allowed, right? No, it will not happen. That's right. So let's have a look at another verse, verse 14. The beginning of strife is like releasing water. Therefore, stop contention before a quarrel starts. You have a, we have all have a choice of starting a quarrel or not. Now, quarrels will get you nowhere except for going down and making things worse. Quarrels don't work. Stop quarrelling. We must, must control ourselves, control our temper, have self-control, and not go there. Easier said than done, you say. But that's what the Bible says to do. So let's try it. Let's try it. We're all guilty of these things. So let's try it. Um, so stop contention before it starts. Before it even goes there. Before it even goes there. Um, don't do it. Okay. Now he who justifies the wicked and he who condemns the just, both of them alike are an abomination to the Lord. Justifying the wicked condemns the just. Mm, there's a lot of that going on in our world today. Where do you start? Just I mean, here's something that I am so adverse and so in opposition to is having homosexuals teaching little children four or five years <coughs> old at school about their gender. That should never happen. Government should never allow that. That is an abomination. That is a great sin. And those homosexuals will have to answer to God and I would not like to be in their shoes. Now that's one thing that I have a thing about too, a, a, a real um, pet issue about that. I hate that, and God hates it even more, much, much more. And they will have no reward, but they will be punished severely for the actions of teaching little children about gender. Oh, am I a boy? Am I a girl? Of course you are. You got a you got a boy's thing. You got a girl's thing. You're a man, you're a boy. You're a girl. That's it. It's as simple as that. In the beginning, God created Adam. And then he made Eve from Adam. Are there Adam. any countries with no homosexuals? Not that I know of. Every country has homosexuals. Huh? I'm pretty sure it would be. I, I, I've <laughs> never sort of... So I should check that online and see. The only country I can think of that might... Have, Maybe Bhutan. Bhutan Island. What about yeah. Switzerland? They're neutral. A neutral country. I don't know. <laughs> but, but no, it's the nature. It's the nature. It, it's, a, it's contagious. Homosexuality is... The problem with these homosexuals, they don't give birth, but they grow. Yeah, well they, they grow in numbers. They develop <laughs> this homosexuality. You see, it's a demonic spirit. This is what's behind homosexuality, is a demon. Have you ever seen the way they act on that and, and they overemphasize every movement and so forth and so on? It's a de demon spirit doing that. And they put makeup also, right? Uh, yeah, it's terrible. And, and it tells you in the Bible, amongst all the different groups of people who will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, the homosexuals are mentioned in there, amongst liars, amongst murderers and stealers, etc., etc., idolaters, adulterers, and all this sort of stuff, they're mentioned in there, and that means that that's another sin. It's forgivable when they repent. So we haven't got very far this morning, so we're going to have to make um, chapter 2 on this. Okay, so we'll start here next week. Okay. Proverbs part 2. Proverbs part 2. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it didn't get very far at all. Okay, but it's an interesting book, and um, it's, it's good to read it, I'd advise it's you to. It's nice, it's wisdom, you know. It, it, like like the book of Confucius, right? With, like Proverbs. Yeah. Are the quotations, the best, you know, teaching, Proverbs. It's a good teaching, yes, yeah, a yeah. book of wisdom. And um, the Bible says about wisdom, where the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. And do you fear God enough to say, Lord, I'm sorry for sinning against you. I admit I'm a sinner and I'll, I'll repent for my sins. Are you ready to make sure that you're, that you're going to go to heaven? Because 
If I gave you the good person test, you'd, very, you'd be very surprised to find out that you're not a good person. We've all broken the Ten Commandments. Nobody can keep them. Oh, I've, I've never um, murdered anybody. Yes, but have you ever hated somebody? Because Jesus said, if you hate your brother, you, 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 you're calling him raka, which means fool, and, uh, and you, you commit murder in your heart against him. And even if you look at a beautiful woman, or a woman looks at a, a handsome man, and goggles him, ogles him, you know, it's all right to say, oh, that's a, a, a beautiful girl, or that's a handsome man, and that's it. But to keep goggling and ogling like that, that's called adultery in your heart. So I'm, I'm asking you this morning, are you good enough to get to heaven? Answer, no. Do you want to get to heaven? Answer, yes, of course. Nobody wants to go to hell. So I'm going to show you how to get to heaven. All you've got to do, the Bible says, repent therefore and be converted so that all your sins will be washed away and times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. So how do we do that? Well, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, here's the heart again, believe in your heart, not here, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. If you believe that, then you shall be saved from hell. You shall be saved. God will forgive you of all your sins, no matter how old you are, how many sins you've done, how bad they are, even your secret sins are you too ashamed to tell the priest or the leader of your church or anybody, your wife, your husband, your best friend, the whosoever, you're too ashamed to tell anybody. God forgives those too. So how do you do that? By well, Let's pray now and make a promise to God and you keep that promise and he will forgive your sins and save you from hell. And you can be assured that when you keep your promise, He keeps His. So please, if you want to make sure you go to heaven, please pray with me these words. Please follow me. Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I'm truly sorry for sinning against you, a holy God. But I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again on the third day for all my sins. I repent for my sins right now. And I willingly turn away from my religion that cannot forgive my sins nor save me from hell to follow only you, my Lord Jesus. This I promise you for the rest of my life. Thank you, my Lord, for forgiving me of all my sins and saving me from hell. Please make me the person that you want me to be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Amen. So everyone who prayed that prayer right now I want to tell you, you are a new person in Christ. God has washed away all your sins and He will not remember your sins no more. The Bible says, He says, I'll remember your sins no more. Uh, 52 times in the Bible it, He says that in different ways. Okay. So now you're forgiven. Your name's written in the book of life. You're a child of God. You're one of His ambassadors. You're a new person in Christ. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone, you who is in Christ, you. If anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That's you. Okay? Now, God will remember your sins no more, so you're a brand new person now. Uh, your name's John. It's a new John. If the old John is gone, the new John is here. And so now, how do you maintain this faith in God? By reading your Bible, talking to God the Bible way, pointing others, other people to Jesus that need salvation and go to a born-again church and grow in the things of God, the God of the Bible. Because there's many gods, there's many religions. And God didn't make religion, sinful man did. And he misquotes the Bible and he misuses the Bible and he makes up his own teachings uh, to suit himself. To gain popularity, there's no popularity in repentance. And if you don't preach repentance, then you become a popular preacher and people don't go to heaven. So we must tell people to repent, that's to turn the opposite way they've been going all their lives and convert from their religion that cannot forgive or save them and go to a born-again church. So uh, what do you do? Well, to bring forth, uh, John the Baptist says, fruits worthy of your repentance is to stop doing all those things you did that displeased God and always please the devil. How do you do that? By starting to read the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, you'll never get to heaven. I don't care. What, that prayer didn't save you. That prayer is just a promise you make to God. You keep that promise, He keeps His. So now you've got to do something about it. It's a proactive word. It's a verb. It's, it's an it's action word. 
So you start to read the Bible. Oh, but I don't have time. It's too big a book. Look, we didn't say to read the whole book or read several chapters a day. All you do is to start reading one chapter a day in the New Testament in the Gospel of John is the best place to start. Start with one chapter a day. And each day as you read the Bible, your faith in God gets stronger and stronger. And it cleanses you and God speaks to you. So it only takes you, what, three or four minutes to read one chapter? No problem. Anybody, it doesn't matter how busy you are in your daily life, daily routine, you can always find three or four minutes. Now as you do that for three months, then after the three months, try reading two chapters for the next nine months. One on the Old Testament, one on the New. Yes, it's going to take you another three or four minutes. But I tell you what, you're going to enjoy reading the Bible. Once you start reading the Bible, you want to read more. But I, but I encourage you, just one chapter a day to start with after three months. Two chapters for the next nine months. Okay? So do that and then start to talk to God the Bible way. This is not the Bible way. The upside down cross it's called. This is the upside down cross which has been designed by Satan to mock and insult the holy cross of Jesus Christ. It's to mock God, to mock Jesus. It's a mockery and an insult. It's an abomination. God hates it. It's a sin. You'll never get to heaven by doing that. And, and don't pray under your breath or pray in your head. Speak aloud. Speak aloud. How do we communicate with each other? We don't sit here and go like this. As religions, most, a lot of religions will just do their prayers in their head. God doesn't want that. If you're afraid, afraid to confess Jesus before men, then he's afraid to confess you before God. That's rejecting Jesus. So, speak out your prayers. How we communicate with each other, we talk. We vocalize. And so that's how we do it with God too. And it's just, just talk to him like you're talking to your best friend. It's easy. Just talk to him like you do your best friend or your wife, your husband, your loved ones, your friends, your workmates, whatever. Just, just talk. Just talk. Just be free. Um, and don't be frightened of what to say to him. He's heard everything. So you've got some bad things you want to talk to him about? Talk to him. He knows all about it. He wants to help you. He, he comes to a heavenly father. And then number three is point others to Jesus. It's the most loving thing you can ever do for anybody is to point them to Christ. To, so they can have the opportunity like you've had today to be saved and forgiven and make sure you get to heaven. Okay, so do that and then go to a born again church and grow in the things of the God of the Bible. That's where you will learn. That's where we learn how to worship. That's where we have you make new friends, good friends. So it depends on who you hang with. It's where you spend eternity. It's what I told my kids. Okay, so hang with the right people. But that doesn't mean that you're to leave your social uh, circumference, to leave your social um, the people that you're with, because they need you to tell them about Jesus Christ. They need you. You are needed there. God has got you in that situation at work or wherever, your friends, your sport, or uh, hobbies or interests. He's got you there for a reason. Okay, that you communicate Christ to them so they have the same opportunity. You can be the one that tells them about Jesus and you can be the one that leads them to Christ. Okay? So God bless you. This is Pastor John Fisherman Cromwell just signing off with Chris. Hallelujah. Uh, until next week, and we'll continue on part two of the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. God bless you real good. And hello, brother. How are you, brother? Thank you, brother. Okay, love. Papote.